Hello 484 students. I promised that I would put up a video about how to break a Viganair um, the old-fashioned way where you actually know what's going on and can understand it. So um, here I've brought up a Viganair cipher in text form from a previous quarter and I have no idea what the keyword is. I don't know what the cipher text is. So I'm gonna go first thing I want to do is take a look at the Kasiski Babbage analysis stuff. So I'm going to find the substrings here. So the key insight here is that you're going to find repeats and a a repeat in the text. Um, I would stick with those that are four letters or longer. Um, if you have a repeat of more than three characters, it's highly unlikely that it's just random. Uh, it could be possible, but it's most the most likely outcome or cause actually. The most out likely cause is that the plain text, there's a word in the plain text or a sequence of characters in the plain text that got encoded at the exact same spot on the keyword. So if you remember the keyword is a systematic way to cipher through um, monoalphabetic substitutions. So this um, Viganair in effect is letting you go through several of these. It's, it's kind of a composite of all of these things. It's a systematic way of shifting through them. So the insight here is that if a letter in the plain text, a sequence of, of characters, um, have been encoded starting at the same letter in the keyword, then you can take the distance from the start of the first uh, instance to the start of the repeat, and you can find those factors, and that'll tell you what size, if you find the distance um, and find the factors, it tells you what sizes of keywords would actually fit in there and not have any remaining letters left. So you, what sizes could you actually use all the way up? So when we look at this, we see several things that pop up consistently. There's two, three, four, five, you know, lots of things. Um, but then we look here, only two, three, and six will pop up. Two, three, four, six, eight, two, three, six, seven. So six and three and two seem to be in here most of the time. Well, two and three are factors of six, and six is the largest we can find. So I'm going to take a guess that this is a keyword uh, with link six, a six-character keyword. So with that in mind, I want to go to these tools here. I'm going to go to the splitter tool, paste the cipher text in. Say I want six columns, which will separate this out into six different text, actually. And the idea here is that we are separating it um, into chunks that it were encoded with the same alphabet. So here it lists it in columns and if you keep going down it gives you everything the first column in a uh, row format here with no spaces. So I can copy this and go back to the cipher tools and look at the frequency tool. Paste this in and remember I said it's just a, it's a group of monoalphabetic substitutions so if you take the letter frequencies, the most frequent letter here is W. So in this alphabet, the most the plain text letter that probably showed up the most is E, and it's being encrypted as W. So I went to the Wikipedia page uh, under Viganair and just looked this up. So if E in the plain text is being enciphered as W, then probably S is the first letter of the keyword. So I'm going to do this here. Oops going to go back here to the splitter tool output and go to frequency analysis here get the letter frequencies here and U is the most common letter um, so I'll go back here if E is being encoded as U then it could be Q so S and then a Q but there was another letter that seemed to be pretty frequent, and that's L. So, oh, sorry, that's the first alphabet. When that's R. So if I look here and E is being encoded as R, then that's N. So the first alphabet, I'm pretty sure, is the S alphabet. And the second alphabet could be either Q or N. I'm not ready to say definitively. I'm going to stop this video, and there'll be a part two coming soon.